All right, there's a little girl. She's she's happy. She's dancing. Yeah, she did a lot of dancing when we were running the Jeep through the woods. All right, today in the Crick Speed Shop, we're on the road. I'm at my buddy Tony's shop, and we're looking at Jeep stuff. I, this is a, a project that I started. Um, it's a 97 Jeep TJ that I bought, and I thought, you know, I could maybe just weld a few patches in it and kick around on it um, here on the farm. But um, the frame, the frame let go. The frame was really shot. None of the body supports were there, so I brought it in and tore it down. And I guess I call this project why bother because there really there really weren't many good parts in this Jeep. Um, I didn't end up pulling the motor. I just took the frame off around the motor and it settled here. So um, yeah I'll have to get that into this frame which uh, I bought. It was in better shape, a lot better shape than um, the one I had, but it was it was far from perfect. The only part I could save off the other frame was this this bracket here for the uh what was it again track bar track bar yeah so this is a whole nother frame that you rebuilt then yeah i picked it up, up on craigslist um the kid had tore no project then he just ended up buying a nicer jeep i patched the rear part of the frame because this was all completely rotted out it was very bad in the front it was uh I think it was cracked here, um, a lot of rust around the steering box. Um, it had been patched in several places. So what I ended up doing was um, I found a TJ in the junkyard that was, was wrecked, that was solid, and cut the front of the frame off. So I used these oval holes. There's one on the top and bottom for reference, squared it up, made my cuts lined it up, welded it on, and added these fish plates for strength. It's a heck of a lot better than the frame I had. And it wasn't rotted out here in here, but I, I added some plates just to make it stronger so that in a few years I wouldn't be taking it apart and adding more metal to it. Cool. When I pulled the axles off the old frame, the old springs were mounted on on these spring perches and there's a rubber pad there and when I pried the spring off they were so rotted that they just they were completely gone and I thought I was going to have to search out some new axles but I took some eighth inch plate and I made a base for it and I welded it to the side of the where the existing bracket was and I got like a two inch pipe nipple to make bump stop it's, it's a little taller than the uh, stock one by about an inch, but I, I figured I'd be all right because I'm putting two and a half inch taller springs in. Nice. I've started to rebuild the floor in this, this Jeep TJ, DJ uh, tub. Um, this is the passenger side, which I haven't touched yet. Believe it or not, the driver's side was worse. I made a, a rocker for it. I made this center piece here, which is just a 12 inch wide piece of uh, 18 gauge with a 90 degree bend on. But it, it, it gave me a, a, you know, a place to kind of gauge my floor pans to. And um, there was a lot, lot of fitting. I mean, this, these parts probably were screwed in and moved and adjusted, taken in and out probably 20 times each, each one. Um, I had to put a metal patch in, in the bottom of this wheel well, in the back of this foot well. I used plug welds to put all this in. I, did, I didn't do any um, full seam welds. I figured it was, it was good enough. And I don't know if, if it shows real well, but I've got this all ready to weld in. That torque box is screwed into place. All my um, holes for the plug welds are drilled and I ground the burrs off and then I screwed the torque box back on, took a marker, marked where all the welds were, 
because I had already put some etching primer on top of the inside of the torque box, I was able to just take a Dremel tool and clean off the metal right where I was going to weld. The rest of it has a primer on it. But um, I don't know if it shows. I had to make a lot of patches to get it ready to put these floors in. I had one here, one here, one in here. Um, yeah. I had to rebuild the bottom of the pillar. This was rusted up to here. And of course, here's the the foot wall patch I made. I like your uh, spreaders here you made for the, the keep the cab in shape. The bolt across the doors, yeah, that's a good idea. What happened was we had it on the frame and my son was over and we went to lift it up off the frame and it kind of caved in and buckled the rocker. That's why I decided to bring the rockers up as high as I did. I probably didn't need to. You can see I decided to repair my old tailgate. Um, I was able to, on my Harbor Freight brake, um, bend the 90 that was, I didn't have quite enough to get the full lip, but it was enough to cover the whole, the whole tailgate. And um, I did a, I think this was just a butt weld. I didn't flange weld this. There's a support here. Yeah, it warped a little bit right here, but I think I think it's within reason. I'll be able to just mud that in, but it's a lot better than it was. In fact, this was all rotted out. I was able to bend, not, it's not actually a 90, but I was able to bend a piece and line it right up with this corner, and I welded right on the corner, which it made it, I don't know, real easy to uh, grind. You can see how rusty it was. And this was the uh, what the bottom of the tailgate was like. Not very pretty. This is what I started on yesterday. I picked up a couple of fenders off Craigslist. Once I started grinding in the rust, there was a, it was all bondo. So typical TJs, they um, they always seem to rust in this area and this this area on the fenders. And the reason why is there's like this plasticky, sponge-like substance that glued them together, and it just holds the moisture in there. I wonder if the aftermarket ones have that. I don't know. You keep, you keep talking about this Craig guy with a list. Is he somebody you know, or is this, yeah, on, is this on the internet? Yeah, he's just one of the local guys, I guess. Yeah. The click. So uh, I started make, making this piece, it's 18 gauge to uh, repair that fender. Um, I was able to bend this um, on the brake, but I had to do it in segments. I didn't, you know, I bent it a little bit and then I moved it and bent it a little bit because it would have been a tighter 90. But I wanted to kind of match this curve of the fender. So I got, I got a lot of fit, fitment left to do. A lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of adjustment, but for this Jeep, they'll be, they'll be more than adequate. This is just a woods, a woods project, or, or an off-road Jeep, I guess. Yeah, it's 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 like a concourse level restoration to run around in the woods, you know. It's, Perfect. Yeah, I'm overkill. This is the other side fender. I've already put a couple of patches in. This one isn't too bad. I just had to cut this out and then I cut it right along this lip because the, the lip was still good underneath and I just welded it on the edge because it, it made it real clean and I was able to grind it so you can, you can hardly even tell it's it's been replaced there. So that's the project right. why I bother. Um, wish me luck. Well you've got a good start on it so far so hopefully we'll be out in the trails here this, this spring. Or summer. Well, in the meantime, we could, uh, we could do a cold start on the Jeep. All right, let's go do that. This is the yellow Jeep from the other videos of the red willies. It's about what, five degrees out today? Yeah, after that, I can't remember the fastest it was this cold. 
try to fire it up. No promises.